Do you want to eliminate whiteness? Whiteness, not white people, whiteness. But how do you eliminate whiteness without eliminating white people? What I want to do is to create an environment that is more collective, that is more value driven, that communicates love to our children. So are you and saying I think that, that that flies in absolute oppositeness with whiteness. Are you whiteness. saying that white people are evil? No. They're not, not evil? Not at all. But then if they're not evil, why would they treat another human being in this manner? Because we all to a co- point that a man to like sin. you We're all fallen. Want, uh, to a point that a man like you would want to eliminate whiteness. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back here on the new video. Today, we're going to check it out. Jesse Lee Peterson, Silence Pool Black Professor. Okay, this is going to be amazing. Let's get right into it. Whiteness <laughs> is an ideology. It's a culture. It's a value system. And what we need to do is we need to eliminate that value system. You want to eliminate whiteness? Whiteness. Not white people. Whiteness. But how do you eliminate whiteness without white eliminating people. white people? Which is most important to black Americans? Which would you say would be most important to them? To become men and women of value and of character or to get a good education? I, th- I don't see those things as being separated. I think but we they can are, have- though. Which one is more important to you for them? My hope is that people will be able to have an education that can transform their lives. So is having an education more important than having values? It's godly the, values. I think it's about having both. And no, I think which that, is it, most important? I think it's about having. So first of all, as a Christian, I believe that having godly values is the most important thing that we can have. And I believe that so education that? is the pathway into that. Education is the pathway into godly values? Yeah, that's why people that, go to seminary, well, right? They go to that, seminary to become a pastor, right? They, they have to being, learn. They end up being dummies and immoral. Who does? Those people that go to those seminaries. <laughs> So pastors are immoral? Those that go to those seminaries, most of them end up being immoral men and women now. Well, I would say they're they're, they're, human beings. How will you develop character, godly values by going to a school? To any kind of school? I, well, so first of all, I... How do you develop godly values by going to, whether it's a preacher school or... Or secular school? How do you develop godly values by doing that? By being exposed to societal ills, things that are not what they should be, and being given the language and power to change them. That's not how you develop values. Yes, it is. Not godly values. Oh, I disagree. Amazing. Where do you, where do you, want, do, where do you believe the godly values are developed then? From God within <laughs> you. Okay, but, where, but who tells you about those values? God does. God does? Yes. Okay, so God talks to us only directly, or we don't learn, do you read the Bible? Matter of fact, you have a better chance of developing godly values by not reading the Bible than you do by reading the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, you get intellectual knowledge about good and can never develop them. But when you don't read the Bible, you're more likely to look for God within you and then live by those, those values and develop them as you're living. Absolutely. But I, I want to move on. I hear that you support Black Lives Matter. Absolutely. You support Black Lives Matter. Yeah, they and do matter. And you are a Christian. Absolutely. Black Lives Matter is an organization that is built by black lesbians like uh, Patrice Cullors. And you black, know she was a, a and, guest in our class. And black homosexuals and radical uh, white social justice warriors. And they were chanting, what do you want, dead cops? When do you want it now? Pigs in the blanket from like bacon. Yeah. And when they did that, other blacks went out and started killing white cops and others. And you're for all that. <laughs> so first of all, I think that's a wide reaching encapsulation of what Black Lives Matter but stands true. for. It is not true. But all everything right, I just said. You can allow me to respond to everything the Everything I just said happened, right? So you people, you're right. That people that did go to protests. And it is and followed they did. by a bunch of black lesbians. Wait, can I? Don't you just love that word? <laughs> What? Let's be honest. I love the word black. Yeah, but why would and you support? we come in all different types. Why would you, as a Christian man, as a professor. Homosexual. Listen. What? Why would you support an organization like that and you want to help the black mind and you are a Christian? Why would you support a radical, evil, agitative group like Black Lives Matter? Trayvon Martin. Michael Brown. 
Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, Oscar Grant III, Alfred Alongo in San Diego, black men who were shot and killed by police officers. Yet you call the people who want to fight against that the terrorists? Right. Who's committing terror? The Black Lives Matter and the thugs that were killed. All those people were thugs you just named. Tamir Rice was a thug. Thug. He a was young, a young kid. Well, he was young and stupid in that he had a BB gun. And did you never taken, have a gun growing up? Had, I did. I had BB guns growing up. He had taken up. the tip off, the little orange tip off the gun, uh -huh. which indicates that it is a BB gun. And then so other people saw him mm -hmm. in the park with a gun. Okay. And they called the cops. The cop got there. The guy put, going for the gun, they didn't know it was a BB gun because he had taken the tip off. You can't blame the cops for that, can you? So he deserved to die. To die. You can't blame the cops that he Did he, he deserve to die? I don't know. He brought it up on himself, that's for sure. Okay, did Alfred Alongo deserve well, to let's die? Let's go back to Tamir. He brought that up on himself by removing the orange tip. Would you agree to that? I would say this. Would I would say that? that a child, which is oh, what he a was. He was a, a big child. He was a child. He was bigger than you. He was bigger than me. Right. Does that matter at all? No. It doesn't matter. You have a, a child who was killed not a by child. a police officer. You make him look like some little innocent boy tiptoeing through the tulips. So Michael did he deserve Brown, to die? He brought it up on himself. See, I, I totally disagree. Okay. Let me ask Michael Did all Brown. of them, all these people bring it upon themselves? My, yes. Michael Brown. Wow. Let's go with Michael Brown. Was he a child too? Michael Brown was a young adult. Well, was he a child? No. Was he a thug? I would say that Michael Brown made some decisions that I don't agree with, but he did not deserve to was die. Was he a thug? I'm not going to say that he was a thug, no. Amazing. Had he not uh, attacked the cop? Oh, uh, I don't think he would. Would he the still be I alive? I totally disagree with that statement. You don't agree with that? Even though you saw it happening, you don't believe it? Agree I don't it. believe that he attacked Did the he cop. rob a store? I don't know what the evidence says on that because I don't know enough it? about that specific case. Amazing. What but kind I of could, Christian are you? What kind of Christian am I? Yeah. I, I'm a, I love Jesus. Where's kind of the proof? Where's the proof? A man that loves Jesus is an honest man. I am an honest man. Uh, we're not being honest about this. <laughs> You, no, because you're asking me to talk about a case and go down to specifics of each But you brought case. them up. I didn't. Okay. I brought them up, and then I asked you specifically about Alfred Alongo, and then you switched over to Michael Brown. And I know why you switched to Michael Which Brown. Which one was Alfred? Alfred Alongo was in San Diego. It's so many of these stupid things, I don't even remember. I know. It's too many of us are dying. Because and it's, it's And you know what? No, because there's a war on black Not men true. in our society. By and that same people. war that happens in the streets happens in the classroom every single day. For every single that Tamir so and true. Eric and Trayvon in the street, there's a Tamir and Eric and Trayvon in our classrooms who are treated in very similar ways by educators. Well-meaning educators, but white educators, educators. Many of them are white, but some of them look like us. Oh, black people treat them that way as well? Yeah, we're all, again, we're all, we're all socialized in this society to perceive that cer certain people are lesser than others. And they do it, according to you, they're doing this, the black teachers are doing this because they are influenced by white people to treat other black kids the same way as whites are treated. I them. would not say they're influenced by white people, they're influenced by whiteness. <laughs> what does that mean? Whiteness <laughs> is an ideology, it's a culture, it's a value system. And what we need to do is we need to eliminate that value system. You want to eliminate whiteness? Whiteness, not white people, whiteness. But how do you eliminate whiteness without eliminating white people? What I want to do is to create an, an environment that is more collective, that is more value driven, that communicates love to our children. So are you and saying I think that, that that flies in absolute oppositeness with whiteness. Are you whiteness. saying that white people are evil? No. They're not, not evil? Not at all. But then if they're not evil, why would they treat another human being in this manner? Because we all to a go, point that a man to like sin. you We're all fallen. Want, uh, to a point that a man like you would want to eliminate whiteness. Guys, this was really interesting to watch, like the entire video. I love how just Lee silence this professor. The entire statement he made from start to the end, uh, I, I didn't attack the professor. Um uh, the death of the people who um were killed by cops. It's probably some, some actions were displayed and they were killed. Um, some of the names he mentioned, I really don't know them.
just Lee was telling him that you support Black Lives Matter, uh, a group that was started by lesbian women. <laughs> just Lee is very sarcastic and he liked to to tackle things in a very in a very different manner that I'm going to use, and just to get what they are, just to get them to keep on talking, and make them feel like they're smart. So the aspect I, I I go against this professor is when he was talking about the whiteness. That itself is a very different thing. Like how how can you eliminate whiteness from white people? It's very very stupid conversation to make, and uh, it makes the professor look very dumb, and makes all his conversation I've been making kind of like. Terrible. I make me see him as a racist for who he is. He's a pure racist. This professor right here is a racist. The word eliminating whiteness just proved that he's a pure racist. Uh, I love how Jason Lee handles this, silence the professor and make and bring out who the professor really is to us to see. Because the professor was hiding on that shares, but Jason Lee brought him out for us to see who this professor really is. So comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as you can. Subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just bought a bag like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales all